Hi, my name's Matt, welcome to Pony Power, and in this episode of Pony Power Theory we are talking about bearings, what they are, what they do, what they are used for, and the many different types. So, stick around, we'll go through them. Right, to bearings. This is what post most people think when they say, oh, bearings. Obviously, these are rollerball bearings, these are cage rollerball bearings. Um, and we've probably all seen them, they come in ridiculously small sizes and ridiculously massive sizes. But these aren't the only type of bearings. We have needle roller bearings, um, which again, there's two different sizes for you. Um, are basically the same principle, but there are other bearings that people are unaware of. But basically, let's just cover the basics. What is a bearing and what does it do? A bearing in this kind of format, in a roller ball bearing, is designed to be replaceable. It is a wearable part of a machine that can be taken out and discarded and a new one can be fitted. If you just draw the shaft inside a piece of machinery with no bearing in between, then you'd end up wearing out the shaft or wearing out the housing, you know, it could be the your engine in the car for example and then you'd have to scrap the entire engine so basically bearings are disposable they are literally uh, consumables for an engine machinery for a lot of other applications rollerball bearings are the ones that most people have ever seen if you've ever seen them before but we are going to go through the different types and we're going to show you a few types of bearings that most people don't realize are even bearings but, back to basics. If you've never seen one of these before, a bearing has an inner race, an outer race, and the balls in between. Now, if I hold this still, the inner bit still, so this inner section is still and the outside is turning, the same thing works if you go the other way. I can hold the outside still and turn the inside, and you can see the balls as an intermediary between the two. The balls are hardened steel balls and so are the races. These are races and the races basically just hold the balls in their proper location and allow them to uh, move Roller ball them. bearings are generally, the reason why everyone sees them is because they're the all-rounder. They deal with um, reducing friction between moving parts or a static part and a moving part uh, reasonably well. They are quite long-lasting, they are cheap which is quite ridiculous because if you ever see how these bearings are made on like how it's made or something like that a lot of work goes into these things and I cannot believe sometimes how cheap these bearings are you can sometimes pick up bearings this size or smaller or bigger and they're quite substantial weight and you can pick them up for a pound and we're talking good quality bearings no one really makes bad bearings because the process of manufacturing that you have to go through to make them means that you might as well make good quality ones. Actually, thinking about it, I have got some bearings here. And these are ball bearings for um, skateboards, I think. Um, and again, the difference between this bearing and this bearing is the plastic shielding, like this one. Um, some bearings are exposed to the outside world. And obviously you can't get dirt and grit and crap into your bearings because that'll impede that'll impede the rotation of the balls. You can always tell a knackered bearing, you get a nice spin, if it feels crunchy, a bit bitty, skippy, feels a bit wobbly on the centre, you got a crap bearing, chuck it out, get rid. Um, so yeah, you have fully shielded, sometimes these shields are metal shields, I don't know if I have one. You have metal shield bearings, where basically there's a, a metal shield. Let me have a look. No, oh, a metal shield. Um, this is a, a plastic shield, and basically they inject these with grease and then just seal them up. So these can be exposed to a certain degree to the outside world. This is for the output shaft for a moped, and uh, the back wheel is exposed to debris and crap off the road and what have you. So it needs to be shielded. Uh, these bearings are open bearings, um, so these have to have their own. These have to have an oil supply. Uh, these are main bearings. These are used for a lot of things. Again, 
these ones are out of the same uh, moped uh, scooter um, and like I say if they feel a bit notchy a bit I could get rid of them. So what's inside bearings? So instead of trying to pull this apart there is a small one I could pull apart which I may do but this is a better example of what bearings are or what's inside and what's happening inside. Basically we have an inner race which has a, I don't know if you can see that, it has a, there on this side, has a nearly a semicircle but a circular profile. We have then caged balls, hardened steel balls and then we have the outer race which again has the same kind of groove on the outside. So what happens is, is you have your outer race and then your balls in their cage sit inside. Now these balls can roll to, rotate quite freely, but there is a lot of movement in there. This is what we call preload, which is pre-applying pressure to the bearings so they are making contact. Basically, this inner race is going to force these balls out. So when we put this inner race in and we tighten them up, you can actually see to this side the balls jump out. See there they all jumped out? When you tighten this down you have a preload on the bearings and then the outside collar isn't moving and the inside collar can move. And basically that's all bearings are. Inside here it's just an all round housing. Um, but you have the same thing, you have a race on the inside, uh, a race on the inside, a race on the outside and then basically this cage which is on either side is riveted together and you can see the rivets inside. See the rivets just inside there. If you want to machine all these rivets off, you can pop that out and get it out. Um, we have a plastic caged roller bearing here, which I can actually pull apart. So we'll give that a go in a sec. Right then, let's try and pop this bearing apart. It has come, become bloody freezing here. Alright, so the first thing we want to do is get a little pick tool. See if we can poke out this plastic retainer. There we go. So basically with this kind of bearing, this is a cheaper bearing, we have a plastic retainer which is basically exactly like the other cage but plastic and it basically just encompasses the balls and just spaces them apart. The balls can't rub together because if the balls start rub together just like gears one will go counterclockwise and one will go clockwise and then that's causing more friction, more heat and distortion and will warp the bearing. So now we've taken that plastic guard out what we can do is just force all the bearings to one to the bottom and then what we need to do is pull up on this inner race because you see it doesn't really want to come out it wobbles a bit but it doesn't want to come out so if I give it a bit of heave hoeing oh Jesus there we go so we lift that up and we have all our balls and we have our inner race so what you can see here if I get this right is the inner race there this little shoulder here for a seal to go on and then on the outer race we have that little shiny outer race there which is where the balls run inside so they're free to roll around and basically instead of the shaft wearing anything out or the bearing wearing the inner side of the housing out the balls and the outer race wear at the same rate because they're the same steel and when they wear too much and they are knackered and need replacing, that's exactly what you do. You pop them out, you get a packet with a brand new bearing in, and you slap it all together. It is as simple as that. So basically, bearings are a sacrificial component of an engine or anything else mechanical that deals with rotation. So moving on, now we have a different type of bearing, which is a needle roller bearing. These are rollers instead of balls. You can see that. These are rollers that are still in the same, a similar type of cage. They're all spaced apart, and usually it's the outside edges that make contact, and then the inner rollers for whatever's rotating. Sometimes a bearing this size, which is quite heavy, it's quite big compared to this bearing of nearly the same shaft size. Um, 
it's unsuitable. It's too heavy, it's too big, it's too bulky, it's too wide sometimes. We can't use that, so what we use is needle roller bearings. Uh, these are rollers instead of balls, so they roll over and make contact on the inside surface. Sometimes you have exterior ones that make contact on the outside surface. Bearings don't roll on both sides, usually. You never have usually counter-rotating bearings. Usually you have a stationary part, which on the, in this case for a main bearing is the outside, and it's the inside that rotates. Uh, with this it's the outside again and it's the inside that is allowed to rotate. The next bearing we have is a similar type, but this is used um, for a gearbox, and it's just a needle roller bearing, but the outside cage is more prominent on this one. Um, these can hold more oil and usually oil fed bearings. One thing when you buy brand new bearings is keep them in the packets. Here's some needle roller bearings. Keep them in the packets. Keep crap off them until you come to install them. That's very important. And I've got an assortment of different types of needle roller bearings for a suspension setup. Right. Now let's move on to bearings that most people don't think of. And this is all to do with the forces that the bearings go, uh, 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 or the forces that are applied to the bearings. So basically on a needle, ro um, needle roller bearing, basically on a roller bearing, a roller ball bearing like this, it's rotational, but there is, it still has the ability to deal with um, thrust, which is the side to side, so that way. So if you have a shaft, like just say like a, a, a gear shaft like this, although this isn't the bearing for it, this will move side to side slightly. So these bearings can deal with light thrust loads. And you do have things called thrust bearings. And I have one here. This is a thrust bearing. Now, this looks nothing like this, but it's still a bearing. It is a replaceable part. Um, that will allow rotation or decrease the friction within rotation and it's replaceable um, but this is a thrust bearing this deals with thrust it, 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 it's in the, it deals with force it deals with the side to side movement of a force perpendicular to the rotational force well, that's sounding far too technical um, another bearing that most people don't think of, piston ring. A piston ring from, this is from a 250 engine, two stroke. A piston ring is a bearing, believe it or not. Most people, or quite a few people don't know that. That a piston ring is not only a seal, but it is also a bearing, it is to reduce the friction. If you were to use it, and this piston's knackered, but if you were to use this entire piston, you get these scratches like you do on this piston. But if you use this entire piston, in a cylinder, the friction running at just say like 8,000 RPM would literally fuse this piston to the cylinder and that's what happens when you get a heat seize a lot of the time. Um, but this entire piston can't contact a cylinder, it would just not move. So even though piston rings, people think that piston rings are mainly for sealing the cylinder, they are also used as a bearing. They are there to cope with the the side loading, they are there to cope with the linear motion, that's the word I was looking for, linear motion. A lot of these are rotational motion and thrusting perpendicular to the rotation. These are linear motion bearings, so a lot of people don't know that, but they are bearings. The other thing we have as well is bushes. Now what I have here is an engine casing. Um, and you can see your normal, and this is knacked, this is literally broken. And if you can see that, let's see if we can get you in. I'm trying to get my rotation right, there we go. The cage is broken off, literally this cage had exploded. And these balls are, f are free to move wherever they want, look, you see, because one half of the cage is shattered. And you can see when you rotate this, it's not cheap. It's sticking there, it's notching all but it's full of crap. So they're knackered so they have to come out. Um, and here we have some tiny ones. Let's zoom you back out a sec. Here we have some tiny ones, some a lot smaller ones. But what you do have is you have 
like what you have here. Oh, let me get that right there. That just looks like a recess with a keyway in it, but that is actually what you call a bush. There's a pressed bush inside there, a lot of them are bronze. And a bush is basically, if you imagine it, it's like your bearing, but without all this, it's just like an inner race in a sense. It's just a replaceable sleeve of material that will be worn out and then you can chuck it and then press in another one. Um, but they are bearings as well, they're called plain bearings. Now, I don't have one right now because I usually chuck them. But on conrods, this is a massive conrod. Um, and I don't have the bearings for this, but what sits in here, there's two halves which are called shell bearings, which are used for um, crankshafts. It's basically, you can't fit that in there, it's, it'd be too big. These would get destroyed in seconds. So basically what you use is you use a, a, a plain a plane bearing or a shell bearing, a plain shell bearing. So it's basically just a strip of metal, an alloy, and that and actually multiple layers, um, that sits on the on the cap and on the actual conrod. Um, if you actually look at this conrod, the end of the conrod is actually used in this specific engine, is actually used as a bearing as well. This is actually, you could call it a plane bearing, even though it's the main body of the conrod, this is a plane bearing as well. Anything that bears the force or the rotation of a piece of machinery is a bearing. So, we have the head bearings, roller bearings, um, needle roller bearings, we have shell bearings and we've also gone through bushes. There are things like Torrington bearings, there is a lot of specialised bearings, I don't have them so I will end up doing a more advanced video on bearings just so you can see some of the more exotic bearings. Okay, right, hope you learned something, see you in a bit.